War is rarely black and white, and the Vietnam War, fought under the umbrella of the Cold War, was a vastly complicated conflict indeed. Ignoring external communist and anti-communist allies for a moment, it wasn't as if every Vietnamese citizen was communist aligned just because they lived in the North or anti-communist aligned just because they lived in the South. In fact, allied with North Vietnam and its military arm, the People's Army of Vietnam, the National Liberation Front for South Vietnam, and its military arm, the People's Liberation Armed Forces of South Vietnam was a movement conceived in South Vietnam and Cambodia. To reiterate, political inclinations, if any, weren't so much laid out in neat plots as strewn throughout Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos. And many were made to fight and die under flags they never wanted to raise. The Republic of Vietnam, or for simplicity, South Vietnam and its military arm, the Army of the Republic of Vietnam, recognized this and even went as far as to launch the Chia Hoi program to encourage men and women of the PLAF and PAVN to defect to the side of the South Vietnamese. These defectors were known as Oi Chang, or returnees. Different tactics were used to encourage defection. Propaganda leaflets that promised safety and a new life were most effective, but broadcasts of defectors telling their former comrades to defect could prove to be equally as effective at times, in particularly when the defector was there in person. Between 1963 and 1970, a total of 150,000 PLAF soldiers and approximately 2,000 North Vietnamese soldiers defected. Some of these Hoi Chang went on to serve in the ARVN as well as the armed forces of other nations allied with South Vietnam. And for the rest of this video, we're going to discuss the Hoi Chang who went on to serve the United States armed forces in the Vietnam War as Kit Carson scouts or members of Force 66. This fascinating piece of history has gone under the radar for far too long. And to tell it, we've employed the help of historian Stefan Aguirre Quiroga, whose article on the agency and motivation of Kit Carson scouts in the Vietnam War was recently published in War and Society. So we know Kit Carson scouts were PLAF and PAVN defectors who served the US armed forces in Vietnam, but how did the Kit Carson program come to be and what did the scouts actually do? Named after American frontier scout Kit Carson, the Kit Carson scout program was launched in November 1966 by the US Marine Corps and was renamed as 466 in 1970. While the USMC was already using insult provided by defectors, the Kit Carson Scout program was basically created to facilitate the process, but the Scouts proved their worth in other ways too, locating and identifying former comrades, locating tunnels and weapon caches, serving as interpreters and interrogators, and calling attention to ambushes and booby traps for not only the USMC, but the US Army and US Navy SEALs as well. The Scouts wore American uniforms, wielded American weapons, and were trained in American tactics. They were also employed directly by the US. The Scouts were not simply attached to US forces, they were integrated into individual units. It was common for Scouts to be trained in specific schools which were meant to prepare them for a life alongside American soldiers. This included English lessons to make it possible for them to communicate with their new comrades, although these lessons were not always effective. Some scouts communicated through sign language or through a mix of English, Vietnamese, and French. In 1970, the Kit Carson scouts were at their largest, boasting some 2,500 active members, and while they were mostly ex-PLAF soldiers, some scouts were ex-PAVN. So why defect from the PLAF or PAVN and then volunteer as a Kit Carson scout is the question. What we must clarify right away is that while political inclinations may have been strewn throughout Vietnam, not everyone boasted a strong political inclination, and political inclinations were rarely what inspired men and women of the PLAF and PAVN to defect and volunteer as a Kit Carson scout. Mostly, they defected for more personal and pragmatic reasons. 
One of the more clear-cut motivators was a desire for revenge, often for being forced to join the North Vietnamese forces and sometimes in retaliation for their atrocities. As the war continued and casualties increased, the PLAF resorted to forced conscription. 33-year-old Tu Du, for example, had to leave his wife and children behind as he was violently forced into becoming a guerrilla soldier. Revenge was his primary motivation as a scout. Another scout, identified only as Sergeant Long, became a scout after the PLAF had killed several of his family members. While some families supposedly under PLAF and PAVM protection were sometimes worked to starvation or outright killed, PLAF defectors in South Vietnam were guaranteed their family's safety upon joining the Kit Carson Scouts. If the family couldn't be returned to a place of safety such as their home village, they were resettled in Chuhoi Hamlets, which, while on leave, the Scouts could visit. Beyond the fact that it was impossible to move North Vietnamese families to the South, Another reason that explains why there were fewer North Vietnamese scouts are the measures that the North Vietnamese army put in to prevent defections. The family of a defector would have been deemed a traitor and they would lose their jobs and be publicly humiliated and ostracized. A sign stating home of a traitor could for example be placed outside of the family home. In some cases, poor working conditions inspired one to defect. Soldiers of the PLAF and PAVN worked in poor and dangerous conditions with inadequate food and medical supplies, often beyond the point of exhaustion and under harsh, substandard leadership. The scouts, on the other hand, could offer more than this, providing the same rations and treatments received by American soldiers. 24-year-old Win Dao illustrates this point well. Forcibly conscripted in 1965, he was forced to carry heavy loads on the Ho Chi Minh Trail. He saw men dying of hunger and exhaustion, and he too suffered from lack of food. After his time on the Ho Chi Minh Trail, Win Dao fought in a PLAF main force company. After a month, he defected. To explain why, he simply stated, I left the VC because I found life extremely difficult and unrewarding. Another benefit of volunteering for the Scouts was the salary, with Scouts between 1966 and 1970 earning around 5,000 piastres a month, and PLAF soldiers earning just 80 piastres a month, with no guarantee of actually getting paid. In South Vietnam at this time, traditional family culture concepts such as the moral debt that each child owed their parents and the importance and obligation of filial piety that family relations are structured around had a great impact on the choice to both defect and to volunteer to become a scout. Family related benefits would have made it possible for a scout to fulfill their obligations towards their parents and their own family if they had one. What encouraged others to defect was the disillusionment they felt when North Vietnamese lies were exposed. This disillusionment could be political Yes, but it was also felt when promises of imminent victory on the battlefield or in the war were revealed as false. When these eventually turned soldiers came to the realization that much more blood was going to be spilt before the fighting was over. 20-year-old Chun Min Huang was a seasoned guerrilla soldier, having fought in the PLAF for five years, yet he defected due to his disillusionment in the aftermath of the Tet Offensive in 1968, stating that the VC didn't win during Tet as they said they would. The North Vietnamese army didn't complete the revolution in two months as they promised when they entered the war. The aftermath of the Tet Offensive saw a huge increase in defectors. 1969, for example, had the highest numbers of defectors recorded throughout the program's existence. What does the Kit Carson Scouts tell us about the Vietnam War? Their stories give us a nuanced understanding of the Vietnam War, one that tears away the stereotypes so prevalent in popular media. It never was a war between Americans on one side and a unified Vietnam on the other. The scouts made a choice to go from one side to the other for reasons that they believed were justified. You know, they could have settled down, resumed their past lives, or have been trained in a different occupation, but they chose to continue their fight. Yet that choice 
ultimately came at a painful cost. As Scout Chun Kin put it, it is impossible to be neutral in Vietnam now. And when you choose sides, it means that you must kill or be killed. Many families are divided by the war. I have tried many times to convince my brother to defect, but he refuses to listen. I would not like it, but I will help the Marines ambush my brother if he will not change his mind. So that was an overview of the Kit Carson Scouts in the Vietnam War, but what do you think? Did you know about the program before this? Do you find it as fascinating as we do? Also, how did you enjoy the input of historian Stefan Aguirre Quiroga? Would you like us to collaborate with Stefan and other historians in the future? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. And just before you guys go, make sure you join our wider history community on our Instagram, Facebook and Discord where on all of these platforms, you get access to exclusive content that you won't find on the channel. And on the Discord in particular, you can talk with other history buffs and myself about videos, random history, pretty much anything historical that you want to talk about. Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.